All right, guys, I wanted to show you now the guitar of the week. The guitar of the week is this little unassuming thing that I got the other day uh, for 50 bucks at an antique mall. Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. This is an early 70s Harmony made parlor guitar. The SR logo up there on the headstock. That's for Sears and Roebuck. Now around 1971, Sears and Roebuck uh, moved to this SR label and they discontinued the long-standing Silvertone brand that had been around since about 1940. So for about 30 years they had used Silvertone brand and then around, like I said, 1971 they dropped it in favor of this brand. So that sort of dates that. If we wanted to date it also, we could look in the sound hole right here. We see a little Made in the USA stamp and it looks like it says... It looks like it might even say 1970 on it. Yeah, this is 1970. This is one of the first of the uh, Sears Roebuck branded guitars. We've also got a model number right there, but uh, hardly no one goes by those model numbers. They're kind of lengthy. Um, these are really good playing guitars. If you have a chance to get one of these old harmonies like this, the main things you got to look for are loose braces. You can check for loose braces by kind of knocking on them. And if you hear, uh, sounds like there might be a loose one right there, slightly loose. Maybe not. You can also check uh, if you look down inside of it while you kind of push the push the top or the back. You can sort of see things moving and you can tell whether a brace is uh, loose. They kind of glued these in a very haphazard way and you can, if you look down inside of these old parlors like this made by Harmony, you'll see glue kind of just slathered sort of everywhere in the general vicinity of a brace. And you know that's one of the things that that kept them so cheap. They were doing them really, really fast. Uh, but these can be really good playing guitars, really nice uh, campfire guitars, really nice sitting on the front porch, you know, sipping a beer type guitars. You don't have to worry about the heat and humidity getting to them. You don't have to worry about, you know, taking it into the cold really. And you know, they're just cheap enough that they have a great sound, really tight and punchy. Uh, ladder brace parlor guitars. This one's actually got some really nice figuring on the top. Uh, these are usually made of birch and it's and all of the wood is solid on these. That's the great thing about them. So, um, you know, if you're looking for something that will kind of age well, where the tone will sort of uh, generally improve over time, uh, you know, these, these are a good candidate for that uh, because they are all solid wood. Now, one of the things you want to look for in one of these, you want to make sure that the neck obviously is fairly straight, which this one is. You also want to make sure that you're going to be able to set one of them up uh, easily. Uh, if you're going to have to do a whole, whole lot of work to one, like if you're going to have to do a neck reset, I would probably advise against uh, getting into it because it probably isn't going to be worth your time unless you're just learning. If you're learning, that might be a good thing to get just for the, just for the experience. Um, but if you've got a decent neck angle and you're going to be able to uh, set the thing up properly, you have to make sure that uh, you know the bridge is present if you have one of these floating bridges. Um, these are probably the best ones to get just in terms of ease of setup because you can, you can easily move these around. Now with the fixed bridge versions, they're a little bit more difficult to intonate. You might even have to move the bridge sometimes even ever so slightly to get it to intonate correctly. All right, I thought I might go ahead and put some strings on this. I was going to put some of the DR strings that uh, the DR people were kind enough to send me recently. Actually, you know, I think before I put all these strings on, I might I might go ahead and uh, polish up these frets. They're not too bad, but they still have, you know, some a few f marks, you know, from the factory, some tooling marks. They've got, you know, some gunk and stuff on them. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these up before I go really any further. <clears throat> well, after popping those strings off, um, this tailpiece actually popped way up, so it's, it actually came way up off of the board, so I think those three strings that were on here were actually serving to push this thing down, so I've taken it off, and I'm actually going to bend this slightly uh, so that this is a little bit closer to the top. So just, I don't want to break it, I just want to bend this so this is I don't necessarily. I don't want it all the way down on the top. I think I just went a bit too far. But you 
Yeah, about, about like that. That's much, much better. There's a lot of dirt and grime underneath that, so I'm going to go ahead and clean all that up too. And I'm going to take the opportunity to go ahead and buff this top. As you can see, there's a lot of, a lot of just uh, kind of surface scratches and stuff around. There's kind of a lot of them actually. I don't know, it just looks like somebody dragged it across a floor or something. I don't know. And that you've got all these wear marks, which I don't mind because it looks natural. It looks like somebody had, you know, played it. Um, but I want to buff this just to kind of blend everything in and kind of get rid of some of these surface marks that are a bit ugly. These these marks I don't really mind so much either because that looks like more honest wear, but some of this stuff just looks more like abuse. So we want to buff all that out as much as we can while we have it. All right, to clean this one, you guys are probably going to think I'm a bit silly, but I'm gonna actually going to use a scouring pad like an SOS pad. Now this isn't, you know, real... Uh, abrasive but it is slightly abrasive on this uh, green side but uh, I've got it impregnated with some soapy uh, water it's just it's not real wet it's just kind of damp and I'm just going in circular motions and that's going to get rid of probably most of the marks that I'm trying to get rid of just by doing this or it's going to definitely diminish them at the same time that it cleans up the top Now, if you go too much, you're gonna you're gonna wear this paint. But like I said, I mean this already kind of relicked out anyway, so I'm not really that worried about it. You can see uh, the difference in color here. This used to be a much darker red than it is now. You can also use these scouring pads on your fretboards if you want. But it definitely does uh, polish up the fret quite a bit. But again, you have to beware that uh, a lot of these older guitars um, used paint for the fret marker so you can really rub that off if you're not careful but you can see the difference just look at the difference between those those first four and these already now if I wanted to bust out my actual tools and and crown and polish these frets and you know sort of do it right I could But this will make for a much more interesting video, I think. <laughs> yeah, again, you know, if this was a guitar I really, really cared deeply about, I probably would not be doing this in this way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, with this thing, I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so uh, now we're going to do, I'm going to let, uh, let the kind of the moisture dry on the top here and then I'm going to come back and polish the top uh, with some polishing buffing compound and I might come and uh, I might buff the frets also with a little bit of the buffing compound just to kind of finish them off. Then we'll get the strings on and check it out. Yeah, but see, um, you can see how much that scouring pad kind of dulled the finish on this. That's because it sort of uh, like I said, it's a light abrasive, so it sort of just lightly um, took off a, a layer of the finish. Looks pretty good. Uh, it's got got a bit of a dull consistency because if you look real closely, you can see just really tiny microscopic sort of uh, scratches along in there. And if you want those to go away, buffing compound, you can use this stuff, which I've grown quite accustomed to using over the years, and I've had a lot of good luck with it. I've used it uh, on a lot of guitars. It will actually buff off a layer of the uh, finish if you're not careful. If you get, you know, real aggressive with it. And I've had that happen on, on, on one old Fender. Uh, so be just be very careful if you're using it on old Fenders because um, you don't realize it, but like the top coats on old Fenders uh, from like the 60s, um, if you get one a sunburst in particular, it's very you can very easily take off uh, that top coat, and then you'll get into the sunbursting. And once you do that, you start to rub off like the outer, you know, edge of the sunbursting, 
and then you know you re before you know it you re you're you're starting to go through that so i had one issue with that one time and uh so i know better now but so you just gotta be careful with this stuff it doesn't really take a whole lot and that right there actually might even be too much There you can see the difference. Uh, it's a lot, lot shinier now. You got a lot fewer of those, uh, those little microscopic imperfections. You see. See, that's a nice looking finish. And I think actually, I think actually, uh, it's got a couple flakes that are coming off here. Anyway, might as well go ahead and finish those off. I think I think that looks like a pretty tasteful uh, sort of relic there too. Now, way better than it was with all the the haphazard scratch marks everywhere it looks like it's you know it's been loved instead of beaten uh, this stuff is also very good on hardware I've already uh, actually hit this with the scouring pad and knocked off a little bit of the uh, rust that was on there but this also you can see it's kind of dull but we can make that shine up too with this stuff Well, I say that to some degree you can with a little bit more elbow grease I could really make that shine but it's probably that's good enough so I'm gonna put on a set of these DRs uh, these are the Veritas strings that were sent to me bonus two free strings and these are 12 to 54 so let's try these on here yeah, this layer of plastic actually really does help uh, with corrosion. If you store your strings for a long period of time, you know, before you use them, you can really benefit from something like that. So they've given you an extra first string and look, probably an extra second string. All right, I got all the strings on, uh, but that's a little bit tough to play with these 12s on there. The, the, yeah, the string height's not ideal. It's okay, but it's not ideal, so I'm going to actually shave this down just a little bit on the bridge. Uh, but the good news is it's really easy to do. It's also a good idea not to make these slots too deep, otherwise that will deaden your tone as well on a bridge like this. So what I might do actually is take a little bit off the top of this. Alright guys, it's time for a hot tip here. I'm going to show you the easiest way to cut nut slots. Depress your uh, low E string for instance. And then you put your uh, sets of feeler gauges under here and see which one just barely slips under. And that's going to tell you the height of your first fret. Got to fit both of those feeler gauges. So yeah, 0.042 inches. I'm going to add about uh, 0 0.01 to that or so, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so you put your feeler gauge under the strings back here up against the nut. In this case, um, the gauge of this string is... You know, going to be somewhere around 50 or so. So I'm going to use my 50 gauge, and I'm just going to slot this down until I hit, just until I hit the uh, feeler gauge there. You want to follow the uh, angle that the string is going to take to get to the post. So basically, just point your file at the post, and that should come out fine. And here any second I will hit that feeler gauge. There it is. You heard the sound change when I just touched the feeler gauge. I don't want to go too much. I don't want to screw up my feeler gauge. But that is going to put that string where when I hit it open, it's now going to be fairly close to the uh, fret here at the first fret. And I'm going to do that all the way across and you're going to get what's going to happen is you're going to get a consistent height on each one of these nut slots because uh, they're all going to be the same height off of the fretboard. And provided that this fret is the same height all the way across, you're going to get a you're going to get a really nice setup from the nut to that first fret right there.
Thank you.